Uh, good evening and welcome to Nerd Talk. I'm Pixie. I'm Sen. And I'm Pyrosin. And there's always that delay. <laughs> Stupid internet latency. I'm the best Commander Shepard on the Citadel. I'm the prettiest. She's the best Commander Shepard on the Asari homeworld. <laughs> and Pyrosim's the king of a pile of rubble. <laughs> Yay! These are my favorite rocks on the Citadel. The, the, those are your favorite rocks on Tuchanka, and there I, are a lot of I them. just want so Commander Shepard to walk up to the bullet holes of the, uh, after the Cerberus attack and go, Spoilers! Are, the, we already <laughs> did that last week. These are my favorite bullet holes on the Citadel. These went through Bar Levon. <laughs> anyway... So, anyway. as you might have gathered, today we're doing part two of our spoiler-tastic uh, Mass Effect 3 discussion. Which continues to be awkward, because neither Pixie or I have had the time to finish <laughs> Mass Effect 3. So this leaves us with Pyro as the only one who has seen the game's proper ending. So which, guys, unfortunately, as yet. news will reveal later, is not going to be the game's proper ending for very long. Indeed. Well, have I ever mentioned I, I hate the internet? Collectively, I, I all of like them. I, I hate PR the miners. Released by, by so the internet is. Pyro, how's your week been? <laughs> I've been pretty good. I, I feel like the the talk, the Bioware statement about changing the ending is not as strong as people are making it out to be. They didn't. The announcement was not we are going to release paid DLC that has a new ending in it. The announcement is we we've we've heard the hubbub about the ending and we're thinking about it. And we want to release more content that has additional information about the ending. Uh, I feel like, A, that statement probably doesn't mean anything at all. Like, probably it's just PR work. That It's a PR guy who, independent from developers, did PR work and says, Hey, yeah, we're reacting to this outcry. And the other thing is... Even if that statement can be taken seriously, the statement says we are not interested in changing the ending from a creative perspective. We are providing, we might provide new information that adheres to the creative integrity of the way it already ended. And so, I, I feel like that's throwing the critics, the crazy asshole critics, and don't, don't think I'm giving them any leeway at all. But I think that's throwing them a bone without actually ceding any ground to them. Well, I, I think it's really important to the integrity of the writers on this thing that they get a chance to say, you know, what their statement was that they wanted to make with this ending. I still haven't seen the ending, either the low, medium, or happy grade of it, if such a thing exists. But I'm well, going to guess it probably doesn't. Well, obviously. I, everyone who played this game wanted a Halo ending. The the Big Bang, save the universe, giant fleet battle, and Shepard emerges as the total hero, like, carrying a flag onto the Earth. That's what everyone wanted. American flag? Uh, I'm sure. <clears throat> the funny thing is, I'm not sure what parts of the ending people hated. Because, well, in the people I follow on the internet... Basically, everybody who's said anything about the Mass Effect 3 ending, they have said, I was not super thrilled about the ending, but I thought it was okay. And I, I myself have a slightly divergent opinion from that, which is that I basically loved the ending. I, I guess I can't give it an unqualified three thumbs up, no criticism was whatsoever. But I thought Mostly it was because really you good. Only have two thumbs. But really, what trilogy ever gets that? What trilogy has ever gotten the perfect ending where everyone was like, "Yeah, totally appropriate. That was great." I can't think of a single trilogy in gaming that's ever gotten it right. Oh, in gaming, okay. In or media. movie wise, because certainly people were pissed at a uh, Return of the Jedi when it came out. Let's take the very serious uh, adult-oriented Star Wars story and add Muppets that defeat the Empire? Sure. No, not what I wanted. You just wanted to Google the word face. <laughs> I didn't say that word. Thankfully, Googling the word face, the first thing that comes up isn't the Wikipedia article telling you what a face is. It's Facebook. Thanks, Thanks a lot, Google. <laughs> But, yeah, I, I don't know what people's problem with the ending are that I could talk about the their problem, concerns. It wasn't, it wasn't the stereotypical action movie ending. 
You think that's what it was? Yeah, people it's... wanted to watch Shepard walk up and punch a reaper in the dick. <laughs> I'm sorry. The tentacles. I'm right. Just... <laughs> people wanted to feel like they were total intergalactic badasses and save the day. And oh no, that doesn't get to happen because the universe isn't perfect. Okay, what gets me is, I, I think I'm almost okay that you have the right to whine about the ending. It's the complaining to the FC, FTC. Okay, that's, well that's, that is above and beyond, that's just basically criminal activity. I mean, there's, there's harassment and violence involved, or threats of violence, credible threats of violence involved in this complaining about the ending. And there is no possible defense of that, I mean. That is just right. outside the bounds of society. <laughs> that is, in fact, a picture of a rabbit eating popcorn at the very top of Kotaku. <laughs> um, but, yeah. Yeah, I that, mean, that's unnecessary. I found the whole petition thing to be in very bad taste. In, in bad taste, sure, but, I mean, if they want to do it, they can. Right. And people can start a petition of... about anything they want. You can even petition the U.S. government to take action against certain things. They never will, but you can. Indeed. So, yeah, I mean, if people want to complain about it, so be it. If Bioware even wants to release additional content, then eh, they can do that too. Whatever. I, I wish this, I wish Bioware's decision making was driven by artistic motivations rather than financial motivations. Right. But either way, I, I can almost never object to additional things well, being made my question and, is where were the people complaining about like the ending of dragon age 2 because that was that ending was far far worse than mass effect complaining to obsidian that you know the right but the, at the end of kotor 2 or the lack thereof I, I guess it says something about mass effect as a franchise and how popular it is that like bioware has had bad endings in games before kotor didn't have one no kotor, no, kotor, kotor had obsidian. an ending kotor 2 okay, did not yeah. have an kotor ending kotor 2 was obsidian and nothing got said of it but like what, what happened in kotor Dragon 2 Age is 2. just that they wanted to release it for the holiday season and they weren't done with it so they just released like a development build that was not finished they just pushed it out the door and it just <laughs> and sort it of literally cuts to credits an ending don't understand this it's right. just it just stopped the game just stopped and there was no ending it, it it nearly just crashes like you get you get to the point where they haven't written another mission and it crashes to desktop you're done you're done the end it crashes to credits no. say what you will about the mass effect 3 ending there was anyway. an ending there right but like dragon age 2 ended horribly absolutely horribly like uh, the reason the reason i'm not complaining about the ending to dragon age 2 is because by about the second 20 minutes of dragon age origins i'd had enough right like okay I, I, i'm done here I, I finished dragon age origins and was like well that ending was bullshit because let's go over the ending of dragon age 2 or sorry dragon age 1 yes you stop the invasion of ferelden you you wipe out that scourge that's going through at the exact same time, your character is still infected with the taint, lol, <laughs> and likely to die from it. D death by taint. You have fathered a child with Morgan, who's like, you know what, I'm gonna go raise this on my own. See you later. And she wanders off, like, literally all you get about her is text about someone seeing uh, Morgan crossing the border. <laughs> Which one? We don't know. <laughs> yeah. Your party couldn't give more of a rat's ass about you. Chances Interesting are you put to note someone that horrible in charge of the country. The plots of Dragon Age and Mass Effect are nearly identical except for their settings. I mean, the what is the darkness, the dragon curse, whatever that's the, the bad taint. guys in Dragon Age? Well, it's not I called the taint. It's called it's called something with dark in it. But they're no, basically you have to the reapers. Your taint. <laughs> Seriously. YouTube this. Yeah, right? You'll find them talking about taint all over the place in that game. Dragon Age taken out of context. One it for of the more funniest than games minutes, you'd ever. Know. I, I played it to the point where you have to drink the blood of the corrupted to right. ingest like the taint into taint. yourself. And that's what it does, is it gives you the taint. <laughs> I, thought, I, thought there was, I thought there was a different word for it. I thought there was it I'm was sorry, darkness why something. We made count of how many times we say the word taint tonight. 
Hang on, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna look this up now, and I'm gonna link this to you. If you search Dragon Age Taint, I'm going to laugh at what comes up through Google. I'm just gonna go ahead and do an image search for this. Yeah. Okay, Dark Spawn is what I was looking for. Yeah, well, no, that's, that's what the they were. The enemies. Yeah, that's what they are. The thing that infects people is the taint. And and the 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 spread of the taint is called the blight. Oh, there's there's okay. They they say blight and dark spawn a bunch, which are other words. Anyway, the blight and the dark spawn are basically the reapers. It's so the the gal the the human world is threatened by external forces with mysterious unknown motivations, and you have to prevent them from killing everything. Yep. And, um, what, are you looking for the, like, joke video? Yes. That would be, uh, Dragon Age DLC, I think is the one. I think it is that DLC trailer at the top. Yeah, that, this is it. Okay. So, continuing. I guess we can talk about the... This will be... This will have to be in, like, a link dump later. Yeah. We can talk about the, the DLC that's available for Mass Effect 3 right now, because we've all been over that. Um, I don't know. Have you picked up the uh, From Ashes DLC? I do not have it, no. Hmm. This is difficult. Do you care if we discuss it? Oh, I, I'm, I'm very familiar with its content. You get a Prothean squad mate. Yeah. Which, I will say, the sequences where you acquire him are incredibly cool, because you're treated to flashbacks of the last day of the Prothean Empire, in which uh, his name is Zavik? Javik. Javik, that's right. In which Javik uh, puts himself in cryo for, you know, 50,000 years, because that's a thing. Uh, it... I, I want to play with the gun that he was using. You, you end up getting it when you get him, but I just want to use it. It is so cool looking. And I I was really hoping for some content that's like, So, Liara, you don't have a job anymore. Because you got to think, an archaeologist whose only job is to study this extinct race, if you've got one, game over. Well, it, she's got a new job as, you know, the Shadow Broker, so... It well, matter. yeah, but if anyone wants to ask a question about ancient Prothean society, they can just go talk to Javik. Except he, um... Except the, the, the problem with that was that he was just a soldier, and also he was born during a time where his race was already at war with Reapers. Right. So he doesn't know enough about their, like, culture and civilization. So, tell me... Each of you, how far you have gotten in the game? He's gotten. It, it, it'll be because somewhat difficult for me to talk about has things a job. when I can't talk about anything. <laughs> right, I've gotten through the first part of the rescue the quarian operations. Okay, but you have not finished that. No, I have not been down to the planet. Well, that leaves me with very little to say. I know I haven't advanced much. But that said, we do have other discussions tonight if we're about done with Mass Effect for the evening. Oh man, there's so much to say about Mass Effect. There will I, be I just more wanna, Mass Effecting. I, I want to say a general note about the ending is that the my alternate interpretation about why everybody is so angry, and you're probably right that it's, there was a, a mixed ending instead of a happy ending, but the thing that I loved about the ending is that the Reapers are not just destroying everything as a means of reproduction. There's right. there's some larger purpose, and that is that is what I loved about Mass Effect One that I didn't like about Mass Effect Two, and that's why I love the the events of Mass Effect Three. Oh, so we finally get an answer, is what you're saying. Yes, there, there's sort of a really good answer. It's it's mysterious, but it is... It's not like, okay. here's everything stripped bare and it's really boring. Right. Like, say, the end of Lost, where you have to plug a rock into a hole to stop the spirits from draining away or whatever. It's, who made the Reapers and well, why? 
Yeah, I mean, I have full faith in Bioware going into this. And yeah, that is as insane as it sounds. Lost was done. Moving anyway. On. <clears throat> um, I have full faith in Bioware as storytellers. That they can do a wonderful job of bringing things together. That it's not going to be a boring... I have faith in Mac Walters. It's just all I'm saying. Look, it's not going to be a boring Halo ending. Mass Effect has um, never been about that. It's not going do, to be, yep, do, we beat do, the do, aliens and that's it. Do you two mind if I read this, like, open letter to the to the public from uh, Ray Muska? Absolutely, go for it. This go is the letter that says we want to preserve the creative integrity and provide yes. more information. So I'm just going to read this verbatim. Okay. <laughs> okay, as co-founder and GM of Bioware, I'm pr very proud of the ME3 team. I personally believe Mass Effect 3 is the best work we've yet created. So it's incredibly painful to receive feedback from our core fans that the game's endings were not up to their expectations. Our first instinct is to defend our work and point to the high ratings offered by critics. <laughs> yeah, this thing has just dominated Metacritic. It's like in at 94%. As well it should. It's a great game. But out of respect to our fans, we need to accept the criticism and feedback with humility. Things that would never happen before the modern age of gaming. I believe passionately that games are an art form and that the power of our medium flows from our audience who are deeply involved in how the story unfolds and who have the uncontested right to provide constructive criticism. Note the constructive part there. Yeah, most of this hasn't been. At the same time, I also believe in and support the artistic choices made by the development team. The team and I have been thinking hard about how to best address the comments on ME3's endings from players while still maintaining the artistic integrity of the game. A middle finger would be my recommendation. <laughs> Mass Effect 3 concludes a trilogy with so much player control and ownership of the story that it was hard for us to predict the range of emotions players would feel when they finished playing through it. The journey you undertake in Mass Effect provokes an intense range of highly personal emotions in the player. Like, seriously? That mission on Tuchanka destroyed me. <laughs> right. Even it, so, the passionate reaction of some of our most loyal players says the current endings in Mass Effect 3 is somewhat that has bleh, is something that has genuinely surprised us. Uh, this is an issue we care about deeply, and we will respond to in a fair and timely way. We're already working hard to do that. What? <laughs> to that end, since the game launched, the team has been poring over everything they can find about reactions to the game. Industry press, forums, Facebook, and Twitter, just to name a few. Clearly, they haven't been reading mine. Checking Facebook and Twitter is now corporate research. Uh, Congratulations. Everybody I follow, and I am all over the internet, and I read the writings of a lot of people, nobody I follow has been part of the camp that has been complaining about the ending. So right. I can't find these people. Where are because, they? Because intellectuals are actually able to look around and go, oh, that was thought-provoking. Uh, I, I, I think it's all players who are not like journalists I, I don't think there's hardly any people in the field who have these strong negative opinions about the ending i think it is all sort of to use an unnecessarily derogative word plebeians you know little people <laughs> who, yes who are having these opinions <laughs> the people who wanted halo fork to come early actually yeah. sorry that would be halo 6 and so just Did community members who registered an account on a forum and are ranting and raving on the forums and or, you know, making credible threats of violence. I... The Mass Effect team, like other teams across the Bioware label within EA, consists of passionate people who work hard for the love of creating experiences that excite and delight our fans. Or make them cry hours and forever. <coughs> <laughs> I'm honored to work with them because they have the courage and strength to respond to constructive feedback. Building on their research, exec executive producer, who says exec? <laughs> Casey Hudson and the team are hard at work on a number of game content initiatives that will help answer the questions, providing more clarity for those seeking further closure to their journey. Clearly he ran out of letters. You'll hear more on this in April, which is only a couple weeks from now, actually. Shut your mouths. Give us nine days to work. We're kind of. It, it's, oh. I, I feel like the you'll see more about this in april is almost okay yeah we're gonna throw you a bone now but by the time it actually comes time for us to to make good on these promises you will have 
calmed down. Some of the adrenaline will le have left your crazy asshole bodies. I just and want them be able to, to relax a little bit. I want them to release a DLC pack that's just listed as the non-thinkers edition, where it's like, yep, Shepard launches himself through the Normandy's torpedo tube that Garrus set up, and like, sure, you can punches a Reaver right in the face, and, it and then it explodes, it explodes so hard that the rest of the Reaver fleet detonates, and then Shepard lands on top of the White House, hoists up the Earth flag, and is like, I rule y'all! I want that to be the also Mass cupcakes. Effect non-thinkers ending. At least a pudding. At least a pudding. The last Reaper turns into a Jello, which Shepard then sits on the lawn of the White House, eats, and fires his Matic rifle into the air. <laughs> At the same time. Right. Let's see, we're working hard to maintain the right balance between the artistic integrity of the original story while addressing the fan feedback we've received. Fan feedback, I, I love raving, how screaming. I love how politically this is. Comments like. are closed on this. I, I also noticed that. <laughs> this is in addition to our existing plan to continue providing new Mass Effect content and new full games, so rest assured that your journey in the Mass Effect universe can and will continue. The you reaction... won't be playing Shepard, though, so shut your hole. <laughs> the reaction to the release of Mass Effect 3 has been unprecedented. On one hand, some of our loyal fans are passionately expressing their displeasure about how their game concluded. We care about this feedback, and we're planning to directly address it. However, most folks appear to agree that the game as a whole is exceptional, with more than 75 critics giving it a perfect review score and a review average in the mid-90s. Reviewers like us, shut your craws. I'm proud of the team, but we can and must always strive to do better. How do you do better than a perfect score? Right. <laughs> you 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 ship pudding with it. <laughs> Clearly, they're missing pudding. I, I'm on to this. And a sandwich. A Caden pudding said he could sandwich. Use one. Yeah, Caden mentioned needing a sanity check on the Citadel, and I told or he said he needed a sanity check, and I totally thought he said he needed a sandwich, and I was like, "You're sitting yeah. in a cafe. Why you don't know you what? just order one?" I, the, this is a this is a positive theory. If I manage to ever produce a game, or or if the comic book manages to get made, I'm going to include a coupon for one sandwich. <laughs> We're just gonna come that that will be very expensive for you. No, no, you you'll be able to go to a store and get a sandwich in addition to buying this book. It's like here, why don't you have something to eat while you read this? You'll be in a better mood. Uh, the, are like, you going to uh, sell the comic for like ten bucks or? Well, I imagine you'd have to at that point to make up for the sandwich you just sold. Right, of course. And that's kind of like a ripoff, because I'd rather just, just buy the comic and the sandwich and not and, deal and with the be, coupon. And be able to find your own sandwich? Well, I, I want you want to... to have to figure out where to eat on their own. They want to be told where they can eat for cheap. I, I want you to take a loss on the comic. I want you to sell me the comic for two ninety nine and include the sandwich coupon, and you're paying for the sandwich out of your pocket. That's right. what I want. And if you don't, I'm going to complain to the FTC about you. <laughs> Some of the criticism that has been delivered in the heat of passion by our most ardent fans... Rita's raving insanity. <laughs> even if founded on valid principles, such as seeking more clarity to questions or looking for more closure, for example. Wait, the internet wants uh, or has valid reasoning behind their arguments? Has unfortunately become destructive rather than constructive. <laughs> become i thought it started as that <laughs> we listen and will respond to constructive criticism but much but much as we will not tolerate individual attacks on our team members right we will not support or respond to destructive commentary except for this acquiescence to that yeah except for giving in to the criticism if but again i i feel that this statement is not giving in in any significant way Except you said that when they merely made that Facebook post saying they were considering doing it. And then it was like, well, they're doing it. So, well, you've been wrong already. <laughs> no, this statement is the same statement as this statement. The, well, the, the other one was, we're considering doing this, and now it's, we're definitely doing this. Well, they we're, we're definitely here that doing going to change something. The end. As to what they are doing, yeah. they don't say. They say, we'll get back to you in April with almost nothing. Uh, with I mean, something that is creatively preserves the creative integrity of the original ending which would, is not is different from changing the ending with this statement i really feel like he's he's saying we're not changing the ending what we are going to do is add more so that you have your answers what we are going to do is politely brush you off in a way that will calm you down a bit without actually acquiescing to any of your demands right 
I'm not convinced of this, but anyway, let me finish reading this. Let's see. Ah, here we go, last paragraph. If you are a Mass Effect fan and have input for the team, we respect your opinion and want to hear it. Which is why the comments are closed. Right. <laughs> We're committed to address your constructive feedback as best we can. In return, I'd ask that you help us do that by supporting what I truly believe is the best game Bioware has yet created. Crafted. Sorry. I urge you to do your own research. Play the game, finish it, and tell us what you think. Tell your friends if you feel it's a good game as a whole. Trust that we are doing our damnedest as always to address your feedback. As artists, we care about our fans deeply and we appreciate your support. Thank you for your feedback. We are listening. You know what? I'm waiting. The comment section on this post is closed off. I, I'm Dude. really waiting for his next post to say, to help rewrite the ending of Mass Effect 3, we even listed Obsidian. <laughs> uh, they, they just replaced the ending that is already in Mass Effect 3 with Crash to Desktop, like, yeah. like an hour before the ending. They come running back and like, oh my god, we found the script for the end of KOTOR 2. Can we just use Mass Effect characters and do it? No, they don't even use Mass Effect characters. It, it just crashes to desktop and then opens like a demo version of KOTOR 2 <laughs> with a save file up at, right at the end. It just cuts to KOTOR 2 with KOTOR 2 characters and KOTOR 2 mechanics and does that ending. Right. So I, I guess what we're saying is we'll have to watch... Um, Bioware and see what comes of this because we have no guarantees right now as to what actually is going to happen there, there's nothing announced suffice to say they said that they'll listen for feedback which I guess this means I have to actually post something to Facebook when I finish the game is that a Tali t-shirt really yeah. it's referred to as a Tali pinup tee is it possible to do a pinup of someone who's fully clothed head to toe Clearly. I guess. You know what? At least they didn't go and put Tali in like a bikini, because that probably would have killed her. I think most humans can barely survive going swimming at the beach. <laughs> so, th there will be a lot more interesting things to talk about when you two have progressed further in the game. Right, and that should be happening this week for me. But on to other topics. So... One of us sat down with a new game this week, and still hasn't finished the other one. I probably should have. Oops. One of us has a job. You fool. Right. So, I sat down and played Street Fighter Cross Tekken. The latest release in Capcom's ever-growing fighting library as they try to make the genre relevant again. So, in doing this, both Capcom and Namco have decided that they're going to go ahead and, you know, ex do a character exchange. It's kind of neat. So, for the first entry, we have Street Fighter Cross Tekken, because let's face it, it's easier to program a Capcom fighting game than a Namco one. Namco does that complicated 3D bit, right? Yeah, a, a high-level summary for people who are not super into fighting games. Uh, the basic mechanics of Tekken are that You'll have uh, characters who move around in a 3D space, and the, there's a mechanic called seven-way run. So by default, forward and back on your joystick, the two characters are moving along a plane with each other. But up and down, if you, if you press them on the joystick, your character will start to strafe around the other character. And so the combat takes place on a 3D battlefield. And uh, Street Fighter... There's just the one camera position, and the camera doesn't even practically really move. And it's on a 2D plane, and the characters never leave that plane. Right. And uh, about the moves in Tekken, Tekken is motivated a lot more by button presses, and, like, most famously, 10-button combos. And so you'll use the face buttons on your controllers in rapid-fire, specifically timed sequences to do your moves. Whereas Street Fighter is motivated a lot more by joystick movements. So you'll do quarter circle forward and light to fireball or whatever. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot more joystick in Street Fighter, a lot more buttons in Tekken. So that said, it's interesting seeing the Tekken characters converted over to a more Street Fighter-ish platform. Where, yeah, you've got the basic do a, a movement with the joystick and then tap one of the attack buttons to perform what would be like a three-hit combo move in Tekken. 
That said, we'll also see the release later of Tekken Cross Street Fighter, which will, again, take Street Fighter characters and put them in a Tekken-style game. So which, we'll see how Namco does with that. Now that I've just talked about that, I wonder how that'll work, because obviously, quarter circle forward light, If the way you start that is by moving the joystick down, and what moving the joystick down in a Tekken world means is strafe to your left, or strafe to your right. Yeah. So, I, I guess there's just a timing window that you can convert that to a joystick motion for a combo before it'll start strafing. I wonder if that'll make timings awkward. Well, chances are they'll change it so that those super moves trigger at the end of a combo. So, for instance, hitting someone with right punch, left punch, right punch might trigger a fireball. Uh-huh. And then they'll just work it into a normal attack combo, like most well, of Tekken's moves do. At I mean, that there point, are they're moves barely even that are Street quarter- Fighter characters. I mean... The, the joystick motion combos are fundamental to the Street Fighter-ness of Street Fighter. Yeah, but there are quarter circle uh, moves in Tekken. So, for instance, in order to do... Um, uh, what's his name? Uh, Lee's launcher kick. It's quarter circle back kick. And you kick the enemy straight up into the air. In right, shocking so... shocking height. So I guess it, the mechanics still for exists. that are all already worked out. Yep. That's still a thing. Um... So let's go over graphics and soundtrack. Um, The graphics engine for Street Fighter Cross Tekken is a beautiful cel-shaded standard uh, button fighting game. The characters are stylized, without a doubt. The world graphics are... Or, yeah, the, the fighting scene is entirely stationary. It does not affect your character in any way. There's no way to interact with it. That said, they are full of beautiful animations, and it is actually a joy to just watch what's going on behind you. So, for instance, there's one level which is just a, a city street, and really you can ignore it completely while you're playing, but I had an extra person in the room watching as I played this map, and uh, she looked at the screen and was like, why is there a giant robot broken on the ground squeezing a traffic cop as another cop, like, struggles to pull him out of the thing's hand? Terrifying. If you look further in the background, there is a tank driving on an overpass firing at another robot that's still walking around. Just because. Uh, One of the final levels is in the back of an Arctic transport with the back door open as it drives through a canyon in which you see a giant, like, demonic woolly mammoth trying to chase down the transport that you're currently in. I are woolly mammoth. I hate trucks. Right. When you get to the final level in front of Pandora's box, you see, like, all kinds of just mystic carnage being unleashed behind you as your two characters, or, yeah, three characters fight it out. It's got some amazing animations. Um, that said, all the characters are amazingly represented, even the ones that had to be recreated from ground up by Capcom. They, they represented the Tekken characters incredibly well. Um, they all have their signature moves attached to them. They all look right, they move correctly. The voice acting is spectacular. And one of the things that I like most about this game is the energy level of it. It is a really energetic game. Like, you play something along the lines of Street Fighter, and it's very slow, very meticulous, and... The pacing is much different. Very, very deliver, deliberate. And Marvel vs. Capcom 3, for example, is, is like... Psy- ah! psychotically loose. Like, oh. everything in Capcom is independent and fast-paced, and you can make countless mistakes, and as long as your character can just recover fast enough, you're fine. Mm. Street Fighter Cross Tekken is somewhere in the middle. It, it's looser than Street Fighter is, but it's nowhere near as loose as uh, Marvel vs. Capcom. It, it's got that line... See, if you had said this to me, like, two years ago, I'd have looked at... You'd have no idea. I, I'd have looked at you like you were nuts. But right. Just... It, it's got that line where, yeah, there are a lot of moves that you have to be very uh, careful to choose what you're doing. But then again, there are some moves that are just like, yeah, this is a pretty easy combo. And look at this awesome thing I just did. Mm-hmm. I mean, to do the, your, your ultimate attack in the game, which is called a cross, uh, cross rush, all you do is quarter circle forward, medium punch, and medium kick at the same time. 
Those quarter circles are a bitch. And these result in your character that you've got out now doing a short super, followed by knocking the enemy character into your standing by secondary character, who then unleashes his ultimate on them. They all look fantastic, and any character can chain into another one. It's really cool to watch. So how big are teams? Are Is it three characters or two characters? It is a... The game is designed as a two-on-two combat platform. And uh, are, are there modes that are not two-on-two? Yeah, and I'll get to that in a second. Um, so in the standard fight, you've got two-on-two. Two, or All four characters have their own independent health bar, and a player can rotate out characters at any time by pressing the medium punch and medium kick button together. That's just your character signals the other one, runs out of the ring, and the other one runs in. It's also possible to chain in specific moves that will transfer you out during an attack and let you continue the combo. So, for instance, the easiest way to do this is you tap someone with a light or medium attack, and then you immediately transfer to doing two heavy attacks in a row. You'll immediately just, your character will knock the enemy into the air and run out, and the new character will run in with enough time to continue the combo. You can also use the cross rush technique, which switches your characters, or you can do what's called cross assault, in which both characters come out, you retain control of one of them, and both of you proceed to kick the living tar out of the enemy for a given amount of time. That said, that's actually kind of dangerous because your enemy can hit both of you at the same time. Um, what, one thing you had mentioned to me previously, though, is that I guess if you run out of health on one of your characters, you're done. Yes, and it's entirely possible that you engage an opponent and just beat the crap out of their first character and they never have the opportunity to switch. Ending the game spectacularly fast. This is a hard fighting game, without a doubt. You can make a lot of mistakes that will cost you matches. Um, there's also a new system added to the game called... So, not a party game, then. Um, it could be. It, could it be depends a party game who really you're partying easily. with. Yeah, it, it could be a party game really easily, because if you're on the level of just button mashing, or everyone in the room is, it can be a really fun game. Um... There's, but there's a, always that one guy. There's always the one guy. <laughs> but if, if, if everybody's that one guy, then it starts to work again if you're right. partying with crazy people. Now, e even with Marvel vs. Capcom, we, we have get-togethers with that where it's just random all, and those are great sessions. No one plays their, their respective best characters. You just randomly hope you get someone you have a basic idea of how to play as. Mm. Those are always fun. And the same thing could be done with Street Fighter Cross Tekken. Except there's that one guy who's mastered oh, everything. The one guy. <laughs> so yeah. Um, Usually there, likes to wear sunglasses there, indoors. That guy. <laughs> there, there's also a system called Pandora that you can use when your character is at 20% life or less. And that's your active character I'm talking about. It sacrifices that character. You get a little animation where the character basically falls over dead. And then your remaining live character basically X factors. The difference between the this and the X factor in Marvel vs. Capcom is that when you run out of time on your Pandora gauge, your character drops dead. So you better hope that you can finish that. That you can win the game during that time. It it's like a thirty percent increase to your attack damage. It doesn't do anything for your speed, but just you hit like a truck. And yeah, if you can't manage to win with that buff, game over. I think it's a great balance. If you're willing to risk that, you better hope that you can finish that fight. Well, it'd also be a good way to make some kind of comeback if, like, you get, like, this much left. And... Yeah. Because uh, I, I might be wrong about this, but it seemed like you couldn't die while that bar was up. Like, it depletes really fast. I'd say it's only up for, like, maybe uh, 8 to 10 seconds. But during that time, so I don't... the other guys just gotta play keep away. Or keep you in a combo. If he can land a combo on you that your help or your time depletes while you're in it, he won. Mm -hmm. I just think it's a really cool system. It, it's a gamble, but it, it's a cool gamble. Mm -hmm. um, so I guess we could get into what little story there is. Um, basically, if you start the arcade mode, picking I know she, she's got that face. <laughs> if you start the arcade mode, picking one of the game's set teams. 
and they're easy to tell because they're the characters that are near each other on the selection screen, you basically get interesting cutscenes in the game, some of which are actually really funny. Like, basically, if you're playing as... So uh, it's just characters that the game creators want you to play together? Yeah, that, that makes sense together. So, mm. for instance, running Ryu and Ken together makes sense. Mm. Running uh, Chun-Li and Kami makes sense. Uh, on the Tekken side, we've got... Let's see, which ones make sense? Uh, Asuka and Lily mm. play together. Um, King and Marduk, the two wrestling characters. Uh, trying to think. Jin and uh, uh, Zhuang the little Chinese girl that is just obsessed with him. They run together. It, it's a little weird seeing Haihachi and the bear as a combo. What? Heck no, that's perfect. That, that's the way it should be. Well, he does train with that bear. You'd think it would just be, it's a little weird with the bear, period, but... It's Tekken, and the bear's super move is he what? farts on you. The, the bear is not where it gets weird. Pac-Man is where it gets weird. Yeah, we do have DLC characters, uh, console exclusives. Pac-Man and fat old box art Mega Man, who is apparently the most broken character in the game. Okay, then. He just does stupid things. Um, the, the story, what little there is, is told in both, like, stationary art cutscenes and fully rendered cutscenes, and in-game engine cutscenes. It basically just depends on what the creators wanted at the moment. It's you, just like, and today I feel like... Yeah, you have the option of both full English, full Japanese, or you can actually selectively pick which characters will talk in English and which, which ones will talk in Japanese with subtitles. Kind of cool. Okay, then. Yeah, so if, if you're a purist who's like, nope, Jin Kazama does not speak English, you can have that. The only exception is Pac-Man, who only speaks in, like, arcade Pac-Man noises. Waka 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 waka. Yes, waka, waka. actually. <laughs> As well it should be, I guess, if you're gonna have right. Pac-Man in this then? game. Um, waka waka! He, he, no, he actually makes the noise of the game starting up. I, I can't even simulate that noise, but... The noise that it makes when you start playing Pac-Man, when it, like, I'm, like, just imagining him trying to do a come at me, bro. <laughs> Well, no, Pac-Man is actually the game's Mokujin. He is the character that randomly copies another character's moves. So he's he's riding in this wooden Pac-Man robot, and he's sitting in the top of it, and he will randomly pick a fighter at the start of the match to copy their move uh, patterns. And that's not how Mega Man works? Isn't that no. Mega Man's whole gig? Mega Man is an independent character. But the whole point of Mega Man is that Mega do. Man defeats the robot masters and absorbs their powers. And Mega nope. Man acts as somebody else. <laughs> nope, that's Pac-Man's thing in this. I that. didn't say it made sense. Um, you also have... You stop making sense right around Bear. Oh no, it, face, it gets so... worse. We also have the two cat characters. Like actual cats or like cat girls? Chibi cats. Toro is the Sony mascot in Japan. Right. Is, is a cartoon cat that they put on box art. It's, yeah. it's just a chibi cat box art it's and like he hello kitty kicks the crap out of people there's also a second one a, a black cat named neko super original i know right mm -hmm. and those two characters are just ridiculous actually the the black one neko is capable of Jumping one of in your christmas tree one of the few infinite chain combos in the game by simply mashing the medium attack button that sounds awful if you do a cross change into that character and just rush the, the medium attack, it will just endlessly spam you. To death. That sounds not very fun. Yeah. There, because you're trapped in my headphones. There are an unfortunate number of infinite replays that um, the internet community has addressed and are going to be patched out shortly. So with any luck, that will get fixed soon. Man, she's just not phased by anything. The internet, I'm immune. Oh, that's cool. I don't, I don't expect the games to be perfect at release. I'm, I'm, I am Especially okay with early patches. Games. Yeah, fighting I mean... Games are so hard to test what players are going to try to do. Also, it kind of takes, like, those... What 
what's the word I want to use? You know, those really intensely focused people who, like, memorize everything all at once? Those would be tournament players. And, like... And obsessives. Well, yeah, like, they figure out all of, like, the exploits, like, that day. (laughs) Right. The the fact that these things are untestable for is almost an indicator of the value of the game slash genre. It's that there's depth to the mechanics that needs to be explored to be realized. Right. It, it's there, not just all on the surface. Identifi- there's three identified infinite chains in the game right now. Uh, one's on Kazuya, one's on uh, the, the little Chinese girl on the Tekken side, and one's on the, the damn cat. The damn cat's being the absolute easiest. Uh, Kazama's only works on large-scale characters. So Zangief, um, Hugo. Bear. The bear. Yeah, it definitely <laughs> works on the bear. <clears throat> Just saying. Oddly enough, it doesn't work on the two uh, extra-large characters, Bob and Rufus. No. Nope. They're not tall enough. However, Hugo is, like, vulnerable to everything. He is possibly the largest character Capcom has put in the game. So yeah, um, mechanics-wise, it, the game seems functional. It, it's definitely got a lot going for it. I thought that was Galactus. Okay, that not not yeah, Shumagora, st- sorry, who is character. larger than the universe. Except when he decides to shrink himself down so he can have a tentacle field fight with Morgan. <laughs> yes. Right. Um, yeah, I, I really like how this game is working. The the fighting, the online fighting is about as stable as you got with Marvel vs. Capcom. You'll get occasional lag spikes, but it's nothing really game breaking. Like, I, if you just intelligently look at your opponent's uh, connection before you start a fight, you'll be fine. You know, anyone less than three bars, do not fight. It's said that you have to do that. But that's not something Capcom can really help. Well, no. There's just certain people who shouldn't be trying to play things online. Looking at you, League of Legends. There's so many of you on there. Uh, oh, so it's not normal to just do 4v5s all the time? All the time. All the time. Heck, I've, I've seen games that are 2v2. Just because three people on, on, each time dis- on each side disconnected. You know, that's one thing I haven't seen. I haven't seen a, a game where the entire enemy team DC'd. I almost want to assemble a team and do that now. Right. <laughs> Just assemble a team and then everybody but you disconnects. Guys, they were all MIA for the entire game. <laughs> but just never you leave the summoner find them pool. them on their summoner platform. Yeah, that's what you do. You take your entire team and just hang out at the back of Baron for the entire game. Watch your enemy team just, like, freak out so much. Or you go find that, like, one obscure panel of bush. <laughs> the, in, instead of just like zerging mid and winning the game they just panic and spend the entire match searching for you right it's what brilliant the weirdest game of Marco Polo it's psychological warfare is what it is you have you can constantly make fun of them in chat be like just, where are they your mother yeah except the problem is someone on, someone on the other team picks nocturne and instantly finds your whole team that's fine. Somebody just or, you. or Twisted Fate or Karth. No, Karth Assault doesn't reveal anything. No, but it'll hurt you. It'll hurt a bit. You'll have regenerated your health by the time he fires another one. And okay. Uh, how's this? Uh, five Karthus team. And everybody ults at the same time. Unfortunately, you can't do that. Yeah, you can't have duplicates on the same team. Right. Damn it. In fact, in a draft match, you can't have duplicates in the same game. That's why I kind of like draft. Makes a bit more sense than, hey, look, it's two Arthuses, two Fioras, and two uh, Aries. I said Arthas, didn't I? That's right. Yes, you did. I, I got my WoW in my uh, League of Legends. That I'd makes like sense. I'd to see him make an appearance. We already have him. He's named Mordkaiser. He goes Hue all day long. So, yeah, I, I guess we can move on, since we're already talking about it, to League of Legends, because that's a thing. We've had a new champ. A new champ. We should look her up. Um, it's Janna, part two. A.K.A. Yeah. Lulu. Pretty much. But there's a fairy involved. She's about Named as Tix. close as Janna. Thankfully, she's a Yordi, so it actually covers up her entire body. Lots of Yordis lately. 
Well, we're actually about... Did you just see me type League of Regions? League of Regions. We're actually about to start the Great Hunt, which is a Yordi-centered holiday. You forgot a G there. So, I yeah. swear, it's, I'm typing it. It's just it's now who's knocking the microphone around? Right, so sitting, in, ash, sitting in my dirty coffee cup. It's a paint cup. And it's totally on camera unless he decide, unless Pyro decides to crop it out. Right. So we've got the Great Hunt coming, which is a Yordi based holiday. So all of the mm -hmm. Yordis minus Lulu are going to be on sale for the next uh, couple weeks. And there she is, Lulu, the face sorceress, Janna 2.0, with a pixie named Pix. So creative. So basically, what we've got here. Um, is possibly the creepiest skin in the entire game. I dare anyone to say the uh, bittersweet skin for Lulu is not terrifying. It's rather Majin Buu-esque. Yeah, she turns people into cupcakes. Actually, regular Lulu does that too, but... Uh... Now, Pyro, what do you she think? She turns them skin? into squirrels. Well, she does, her regular she does it the whole time. Uh, it's a rotation. So she can turn them into one of three things. She either turns them into cats with pretty bows, she turns them into two-tailed squirrels, or she turns them into cupcakes. That looks like a sad cupcake. That's a scared cupcake, in my opinion. Actually, no, I think she does one for each skin. I think it changes each time. Yeah, she does the black cat thing. The Wicked Lulu skin looks just awesome. Like, evil little pixie thing. Tell me on most days. Standard, yeah. You could probably do a cool cosplay of that. Although you're not sh really short, but I guess that would be the appeal of the outfit. Um, so yeah, Lulu. She's definitely in the support role because all of her powers have the ability to either help an ally or hurt an enemy. And most of these are kind of cool, so let's scroll down. <laughs> well, who, who in League of Legends has any powers that does not either help an ally or hurt an enemy? But, like, I think what he's saying is the power... <laughs> Twisted double fate. Duty. His power only helps himself. I think he's saying that the powers do double duty. Right, so let's go back here. This is the bundle announcement. Okay. Scroll down. Let's go to the Lulu patch notes. And hit read more. Okay, so Lulu's abilities. Her passive, basically her fairy, doesn't attack every time she does. It's a little machine gun pixie. So when you click to attack something, the little pixie goes, I'll shoot four times. And it hurts. It hurts unbelievably. Um, the bolts do home in on enemies, but if something walks in the way, so say a minion or another champion, the bolts will be blocked. So this is an auto attack that can potentially be blocked. However, if it's not, she just did like a quarter of your health at level one with an auto attack. Uh, her Q is called Glitter Lance, and this is actually kind of her, her weirdest ability. Both Lulu and Pix fire a skill shot that you get to aim... And Pix's fires from wherever it is currently standing, which comes in on a later ability. So you can potentially aim this to completely cut off someone's pursuit from both directions. It, it's an it's a one-person flank. Right. It also slows whatever it hits. So in addition to doing a decent amount of damage, you've also just slowed your enemy. Um, enemies, however, can only be hit by one of the bolts. So, unless you're hitting the target with, or two targets, one of these is going to be a wasted shot. Basically, it's, it's there as a support ability that can do a little bit of damage. Um, her second ability, Whimsy, either buffs an ally, giving them a little bit of extra movement speed and ability power, and she can cast this on herself. Or, if you cast this on an enemy... It turns them into a cupcake, a little black kitten, or a two-tailed squirrel. Which cannot attack or cast spells. Right. And has... And has a lower movement speed. Right. It has a decent length on it, too. It's like, I think, one and a half to two seconds. I like the name of this next ability. Help Picks! Which she actually says when she uses it. So, if she uses this on an ally, and again, she can target herself with this, she gains a shield, or the ally gains a shield. 
and Pix will then follow them and grant her passive to that champion. So if that champion auto-attacks something, Pix will attack. Just like he would if it was on her. Now the question is, who gets the gold for Pix's kills at that point? You know, that's a really interesting question. I'm imagining she would. I imagine yeah, she would if Pix to, kills like, it. Steel farms that way. I, I would think so. Um, I'll have to look into that. If cast on an enemy, Pix jumps to the enemy and proceeds to just tear at them. With his little claws, or her. I'm not sure what gender Pix is, if it has it one. It says he here. It is male. It is a male yeah. Pixie? Okay. Yes. Um, Pix will then follow the enemy and grant vision of them for several seconds. I, I think it's funny that the ability is called help Pix when you're attacking somebody with it, because it's like, help that enemy die. Help tear them a new one, please. Help them feel pain. Help, help Pix. So well, instructing him to help this is actually really powerful because imagine like a Wukong that gets this cast on him and then tries to get away. Nope, follow the pixie that's still tearing into his flesh. Likewise, if you cast you just giddy at this prospect. if you cast this on an enemy and then use uh, glitter lance, Pix will fire it from wherever he is, guaranteeing an easy hit on whatever enemy it's attached to. Or allowing Lulu to move away from that enemy and still cast her lance. Let's see, and then her Great ultimate. for killing runaways. Right. Her ultimate is awesome. It's called Wild Growth. It can only be cast on an ally, but she can use it on herself too. Lulu enlarges an ally. Yes, you heard that right. Knocking enemies away from them and granting them a large amount of bonus health. For the next few seconds, that ally gains an aura that slows nearby enemies. Yeah, I've had this cast on my so Shivana. So, it makes them bigger, it gives them extra health, Yeah, and, and then slows every and, all the enemies around them. And that's not like extra health as in, yeah, your percentages goes up, that's you gain a ton of health. Permanently? No, just while you're affected by it. When, okay. When it goes away you are reduced back to the percentage you are currently at. Oh, so... Huh. Damage kind of still counts full value. Yeah, but you're not gonna die from losing that health. Right. When the effect wears off. You'll, you'll keep the percentage that you're at. However, I've watched people who are, like, about to die get this cast on them, and they instantly jump to, like, 50% health. So the obvious thing to try here is to cast Wild Growth on a fully stacked Cho'Gath, who is using the Summoner spell Surge. Yes, we, we have figured out. And they will then become larger than Cho'Gath the map. Just be, I am the lane. Just be very, very large. This ability is amazing. Like, I've had this cast on my Shivana in a, uh, in a PvP match, at which point I soloed the enemy team. I was just Big like, I'll dragon. kill everything. Big angry dragon lady. Right, and no one can get away because Shivana's already super speedy and slows you with your frozen mallet and eats people. Yeah. It's lovely. Um, Lulu is possibly my favorite support in the game right now. I, I utterly love seeing her in matches because if you have a Lulu player who is determined to support you, you will do well. What I don't want to see is people playing Lulu as an AP carry, because she's not. Stop uh, yeah, she's it. She's basically support, either way. Every one of her moves screams support. Her alt does no damage. She is a support character. Only one of her moves is actually designed to do damage, and that's more or less just for the slow. And it's just to be helpful. It's, it's a support. Of course, I play most of my damage dealing characters as support DPS anyway. Right, and Pix doesn't scale off of either AP or AD. Pix scales off of only your level. There is no way to artificially buff how much damage your Pixie does. So you Pixie can't, does. like, gear up for... For just auto-attacking things to death. No, you can't. Okay, then. There is no way to make that fairy able to execute people. And for those of you playing the Old Republic, 1.2 has not been released yet. I'm, I was looking at that, and I was trying to figure out when it's coming out. Probably sometime mid-April is what we're guessing. See if I can 
look this up. Yeah, we have no confirmed data on 1.2. I don't think it's even up on the public test servers yet. Do you ever think about running over there just so you can play with all the stuff? I imagine everything's so broken, though. Well, yeah, that's the point of a public test server. Ah, oh, it's just a video. Poo, I thought they'd have it all written out. No, no, they don't have any data on that. I think they're busy worrying about the Mass Effect thing right now. Well, there's also, they're doing a, a weekend Yep, a, a four-day trial pass that you can get on, mm -hmm. which I think is a good idea. I mean, Blizzard's openly admitted at this point that, yeah, we've lost subscribers to uh, the older public. In fact, some of their senior staff have admitted, yeah, we're playing that game. That's funny. Hey, you know, it... It's a nice thing to say that, yeah, we, we acknowledge that this is competition and we like competition. We enjoy seeing what other people are, are doing. So, yeah, I uh, I think that'll kind of cover it for this week. I, I don't have anything else. You? Pyro? Nope. Yeah, in the meanwhile, um, I'm Pixie. I'm Sen. And I'm Pyrocin. And I'm going to get back to playing Mass Effect 3. Yeah, we'll, we'll hope to bring you more of that next week. In the meantime, um, enjoy your ending. And uh, stay safe from the Reapers. Nerd talk. <laughs>